Good morning, everybody. I'm Captain Tommy Scoville, and you are on the lifeboat. <laughs> well, good Monday morning, everybody. Hope you, uh, hope you slept okay. Uh, <clears throat> truthfully, I, uh, I got up this morning and, uh, from Tasmania. Hello, Paul. I got up this morning and decided that, um, I needed to do a uh, a show, and uh, I woke up with plenty of time to um, to put something together. Um, it, honestly, I don't. My prep uh, work is not huge. It's not like other people's. I think, um, but um, I started to uh, I started to try to prep to put a, a show together, and I was going to do dealing with grief or something that made a uh, a lot of sense with everything that's going on. Um, and then sadly, I didn't, uh, I didn't do anything. I, I looked at messenger and I looked at, um, old comments. Hello, Christy. Um, old conversations, um, with me in, uh, in Buddha. <laughs> and he actually had uh, reached out to me on Saturday. I'm not trying to keep this going. I'm really not. I just cannot, um, quite seem to uh, to get out of my own way yet uh, but I'm sure that uh, that I will this is um as I said before this isn't the first uh hello Tammy C <clears throat> this is most assuredly not the first time I put a tie on if you just got here it's just uh I was closer to to Buddha than I've been to um anyone else um i think the boat probably did more for him than the system ever did be willing to admit that but um sadly that didn't uh it didn't get it done and uh there's you know there's only so much you uh you can do and sadly that's the truth you know it would have been uh it would have been really nice if i could have actually gone in there and uh and advocated with him uh we had a lot of a lot of conversations as he was going through that we uh we spent over a year and a half together or pretty close to a year and a half together um i know it's not my fault man i know it's not my fault i'm not i mean i'm not uh i know it's not my fault i have no doubt of that thank you One of the hardest lessons I've learned from the alcoholism in my family is that sometimes the people who are the hardest to love are the ones who need it the most. I think that that's probably the case across the board. I believe that. Um, and very often, sitting in this chair, it takes a tremendous amount of effort uh, to simply deal with some of the people that I've uh, worked with. Uh, forget liking them. I'd be lying to you if I told you I liked all the people that I work with here. I would be just an absolute bald-faced lie. Um, I loved Buddha. My daddy's a, dead, uh, a deadhead, and uh, he was from uh, Massachusetts, and I had, you know, spent a lot of time in Mass growing up in in, in New England, and uh, I knew uh, knew his area pretty well, and we had uh, quite a bit to um, we had quite a bit to talk about, and uh, and we bonded very quickly. I was texting back and forth with um, his grandmother last night. Uh, it's just one of the most beautiful people you would ever want to meet in your life. And that's just the truth. Um, and she said uh, that she would clown around with him if he, if he was doing something that was uh, starting to piss her off or whatever. She would say to him, I will call your father. And, uh, and that reference was to me. <laughs> And he would smart back with, uh, trust me, my dad knows more about this situation than you do. He and I talk on the phone today or whatever. And uh, the what it really comes down to, and I'm, I'm a better man for having known him. I am. There's no doubt I'm a better man for having known him. But 
Uh, I couldn't do another Buddha. I spent a lot of time thinking about that last night. And there's no way I could do another one and continue this. I'm having a bitch of a time continuing this today, if you really want to know the truth, people. And I know that this will get better because it has happened before. But I promise you, I could never take another one of these. So when I say I'm going to set some boundaries, I'm going to bring in professionals to help me set boundaries. True story. Because I would talk to every single person that called, and I would do it until I died. I would do it until I had nothing left, and I would do, I would collapse. That's how I would do it. I know what it feels like to be a drug addict with no hope. And uh, to have somebody give me hope was incredible, and they had no reason to. And I think that that's probably spawned a lot of my problem. And it's a problem. It is. It's a problem. Um, last night in the uh, in the shape that I was in, um, I probably got 60 phone calls. Six zero. I didn't take them. I didn't take them. But it certainly uh, makes you realize that for a number that you don't give out, a whole hell of a lot of people have it. <laughs> uh -huh. Um, probably going to change phones, but I'm going to come back on here and I'm going to be the Tommy that everybody uh, knows. I'm not this morning, obviously, man. You know what I mean? Like, obviously I'm not. And that's going to happen. It does take time to agree. But I'm, when I come back, people, this is going to be it. I'm going to do the lifeboat, but I'm going to do the lifeboat in front of the camera. Are you saying you've developed an addiction to sponsorship and recovery? I have um, I have found myself um, because that's not really what's going on. I, I mean, I can I can see why that is a logical uh, one plus one equals two kind of a thing. I think what happened is uh, this is how I started to do my sobriety when I first get out and. That's really all I cared about was my sobriety when I first got out. And then I started to care about other people's sobriety. And uh, and I said to everybody, shoot me a call. Email me, I'll get back to you. Email me, I'll get back to you. Email me, I'll get back to you. And I just said that for the first year and a half. And the first time that somebody really got it all, first time that I realized that had this person not met the boat, that they would probably still be getting wasted. Yeah, that's addicting. That's heady shit. If you've never tried that, I'm telling you that's addicting. More so than heroin or anything else. But then sadly, like everything else, you get to a point where you start getting crazy thoughts that don't make any sense. Like if I don't save this person, he can't be saved or she can't be saved, which is absolutely retarded. Sorry, really, it's a terrible, terrible concept. And one that can make you work yourself to death. Put other people's needs before your own to the point where you don't eat. Um, Thank you, Borderline. I appreciate that. Just tell me I understand your feelings, but this might help. You feel a teeny bit better a week. One day into my cold turkey, feeling positive. You saved me. I am glad that you are a week uh, and one day into into your um, into your rehab. I think that's awesome, man. I really do. Congratulations. Keep that up. Um, please do. Please keep that up. I promise you life is better without drugs and alcohol in your system. Thank you, Lego. He says, bro, but you might be charged in life to be that guy. He can't save everyone, but we got to at least try. Thank you. You're amazing. Just keep doing the work you do. Uh, I'm going to keep doing the work I do. But the work I do is going to look like this. You feel me? This is going to be the work I do. And truthfully and honestly, the great example is the last comment that I put up there. Right? Thank you. If I saved you, I didn't do it taking a phone call from you at 3 a.m. Because we've never had that call. Right? This is the kind of lifeboat that I'm going to be doing going forward. And the people that pay attention... Because if you're somebody that really needs one-on-one -on -one help from me, 
And you're going to have to find it from somebody on this crew of this boat, or you're going to have to hire somebody. And I'm not doing this to be cold. I'm doing this so that I can keep doing this. But I swear to you on everything that is good on this planet, I don't have another one of these in me. For real. You need time, my friend. Once the boat stopped for a month, remember? Maybe we need to regroup again. Just a thought. Thank you, full of hope. I appreciate that. And it's a uh, and it's a thought based in um, in really caring. I promise you, because normally, <laughs> because normally um, we don't get the hey. If you need to take a little time off uh, and shut down the boat for a little while, that's usually not something uh, right that. Um, Proud of you, Borderline. Truthfully, proud of you. And thank you, Full of Hope. It means a lot to me. It really does. And um, there's going to be some retooling. I promise you I love you and hope to give like and give like you do. Oh, May, don't do that. <laughs> oh, God, May, don't do that. I'm kidding. Uh, the best thing that you can possibly do is to try to help other people. Don't let it kill you. Don't let it. Don't let it wear you out to the point where. I'm just. You know what it really comes down to. Um, Christy's right. Christy says sometimes we need more help than we realize, and sometimes we have to call in professionals, and they can really be helpful. I have done that. I am talking to uh, I am talking to professionals about my um, about my mental stability and my uh, and the lifeboat and everything that I'm doing here. In fact, I didn't even wait. I spoke to uh, I spoke to a professional yesterday. Mm -hmm. And as far as boundaries go, I called this professional way later than I probably should. Have. Right? Got the the boundary thing is hard really is it's hard and i've been on both sides of it i've been the i've been the person that needed that counselor on my schedule and not on theirs and it's a hard thing i'm not i have no answers i really don't i have no answers i wish that there was a way to organize this that you know you can you could work with people one on one and it wouldn't become overwhelming but then what ends up happening is you pick people you're going to work with which is cool nothing wrong with that you also pick people you won't work with and there's something seriously wrong with that so it's not going to, it's going to be a, you know, when people say it doesn't need to be all or nothing, it needs to be, no, you're wrong. Sorry. It needs to be all or nothing. And I can do this, right? I can do this all day long. I really can. I, I love sitting in front of the camera and talking. I love to share. Um, Sorry. Boy, wouldn't AA Ron be happy? Sounded a crap load like dead air, didn't it? Sorry. I talked to uh and that's like I said too, I'm 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 going to be using professional help when I uh when this is completely retooled, you guys aren't going to notice anything. It's still going to look like um, it's going to look like the exact same thing. I'm going to be doing a five and a five, and then I'm going to be sprinkling in some other content in between. It's going to look very, very similar to, um, to how it's looked up to this point. I promise you. Most people who uh, most people who come out of the light bar are, are not going to notice any difference at all. But I am I am hiring a professional really helped me set boundaries and i'm doing this so that five years from now i'm still sitting in this chair and doing this job because the people that know me are kind of betting that i'm not going to make it until november right and that uh, that's no good we can't have that so i'm going to need to do um i uh <coughs> I'm going to have a professional that helps me retool this. And on, on the really, really cool thing, I have um, I have found some people that I really trust. And I'll tell you something, people, that's an issue for me. 
let me be really honest with you. I have trust issues. I have massive trust issues. And I don't think there's anybody here that doesn't have massive trust issues. Right? It's one of the things that as addicts, there's a reason that we're addicts. And a lot of times it is because um, there are issues of abandonment or neglect or whatever. But all of those, no matter what the, the issue is, it does one thing universally. It makes you really gun shy to trust other people in similar uh, situations. And that is a struggle of mine. If, uh, if the vast majority of the really ugly trauma that I had to deal with um, was in prison, pretty cool comment. You have 10,500 subscribers. These AM and PM videos have been enough for most of us. Gives us a chance to listen and chat. CK, there you go. Drop the microphone. I've said this a lot, really. And it's it's going to give me an opportunity so that what you hear in this chair is not wah, 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 wah. If, uh, if I'm not uh, answering every phone call of every single person who's wanting to take a drink or, or a drug, then I'm going to have time to uh, to work on some, um, some content. I'm not going to lie to you people. There have been, in the last two months, there have been shows that three minutes before I started talking, I didn't know what the show was going to be about. And that's not a good thing. I mean, granted, I could come on and just do blah, 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 blah because it's going to give everybody a chance to talk. And that's, and that's kind of the magic here. But um, it doesn't feel good if you don't have uh, something in your head and you don't have it sort of organized into a, this is what I would like to say. And this is the beginning and the middle and the end. And I don't know, maybe a bullet point or two, right? Like a speaker does. That, uh, that makes sitting in this chair a hell of a lot more fun than um, than showing up two minutes beforehand frazzled, right? Not even getting a thumbnail. Been a few of those where you go, geez, is he reusing a thumbnail? Yeah. If I'm reusing a thumbnail, it's probably because I was on the phone with somebody up until about three minutes before it was boat time. Emma says, yeah, I have huge trust issues. Trust issues and sketchy jokes judgment. Um, yeah, so I think all of us, Candy's Life says, physically I'm okay, but this one has hit me hard enough. Yeah, right? Like this is this is really tough. And you know what? The people that didn't know Buddha well probably love him more than any of us because he never said anything. I mean, he was just one of those people that that was always there with sort of a positive message. Um, Linda, the girl that used to run the, the lifeboat, right? And left uh, for no other reason other than it just, it was a logistics thing. You know, um, Linda was moving, I was moving. There was all kinds of stuff ha happening that made it so that she couldn't continue to do what she was doing. But, you know, she lived in the, in the, the comment section. She really ran the boat. So she was in the comment section just all the time and had a ranch and all that. And, uh, because she had been gone for a really long time, Buddha just used to say hello to her every day, whether she was there or not, because he didn't want her to show up on the one or two times that she did and not see that he hadn't said hello to her. And that's just kind of who the, the dude was. You know, so people just saw somebody that was always really uh, kind and caring to a fault. And if you knew his entire story, man, this is a guy that had a crap load of reasons to be bitter. In all honesty, he had a ton of reasons to be bitter and he wasn't. And I didn't want to turn this into a, a Buddha eulogy again. I really didn't. In fact, I'm not going to. Um, but I loved him. And with all due respect to everybody on the boat, I just loved him more than all of you. <laughs> you know? Alan Valentine is my absolute brother. And then, you know, and then it was, uh, and then it was Buddha, but Alan has just got it, got it together. And it's so easy to talk to Alan and tell him what's going on. And Alan helps me as much as I help him. And Buddha needed a lot of help, but he was willing to try and get it. He was deep in the, uh, he was deep in the middle of getting it. He really was. I was more proud of him. I mean, this is, 
he designed his own rehab and he did it because um they they couldn't get him into a pain specialist the story is so long i could honestly tell his story for three weeks um but what ended up happening is is far different than that how is heather um heather doesn't talk to me just being honest heather doesn't talk to me um I don't think Heather uh, liked the uh, the way that we parted, and I'm not going to lie to the boat, right? And maybe I'm an ass, but uh, I uh, I honestly did that for the best of reasons. Is Alan A. A. Ron? No, Rick. I'm sorry. Alan Valentine is one of the first I don't know five or six subscribers that we ever got on the lifeboat, and he quit everything. Uh, he had a really, really bad methamphetamine problem. Um, I mean, really bad. Like, he would go and, and front $30,000 worth at a time. Like, he had a problem. And he had a problem in the state. This is difficult for people in the United States to, to think about because of, like, I could buy a kilo of, uh, of meth. And I could probably get it for about 250 bucks, right? Well, 250 bucks wouldn't get you two grams where he lived. And he was doing it the same way we were doing it in the States. Like he was just going hard. And um, and I'm not, I'm not talking about a guy's sobriety behind his back. I've interviewed him three times about this. So it's been it's public knowledge. I don't do that. But uh Alan Valentine um has just been uh, it's just been such an inspiration. And then one day I said to him, you know, you should shoot me a call. Or maybe he said, I don't know how the hell we got on the phone the first time. Like uh we would talk every couple of weeks, and I just said to him, you know what? Would it be cool if you called me more often? Because I just have a very easy time talking to you and it kind of kind of chills me up. But he lost the human being. He lost like 160, 170 pounds. Yeah. This was a really big dude. And he is not. He's got down to where he's smaller than I am. Uh and he and after the meth and after all of that, you know, then he had to quit drinking, which um was probably as big, if not um a bigger problem for him so alan has been probably the person that i talk to most on the boat certainly certainly the guy that i talk to most on the boat and there are people that i've talked to more than him but uh i don't really work with alan right we're just we're just friends that get on the phone and talk you know we we help each other but i don't think that we're trying to or that that was ever a um Alan does rock like a big dog. So, and then Alan came over and stayed with me for a couple of weeks. In fact, he was here for the uh, the, the Danny Masterson sentencing, which was cool. Um, but that is who uh, is who Alan is. Uh, and A. A. Ron is the uh, gentleman who runs a channel called Growing Up in Scientology. He's become a very good friend of mine. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's who uh, that's who that is. And of course, um, and then Buddha was like. He was like Alan Jr. You know what I mean? He was like Alan, but he was still in it. And he was just trying really hard to get out of it. And he had a lot of reasons why. I was with this dude long enough where I can say truthfully and honestly, he said things meaner to me than any human being has ever done. It's the truth. Some of the most unbelievably vile and nasty things he said to me because I didn't, when he said, I, you know, I know what I'm doing. <laughs> I said, no, you didn't. And I didn't sugarcoat anything with him. And one day he just let me have it. And the um, it's stuff that I wouldn't have read out loud when he was with us. I certainly would never do it that he's gone. But I, I want you to honestly imagine if you got a team of six people together and tried to, to come up with things that were going to hurt me, this was absolutely perfect. And the fact that we became... As close as we were after that, the fact that that didn't damage our friendship in any way, it probably made it stronger, said a lot about um, the friendship that we had. And I'm blessed to hell that I had him in my life, especially as big as, as he was in my life. But you know what? It's never going to happen again. It can't. And that's just that's just the way it is.
Alan is a G, funny as hell too, he really is. And uh, that is Vanessa from um, The Degraded Daughters of Dianetics. And she has met Alan when Alan came out to LA. Um, we all uh, we all hung out, so she knows that he, she speaks from experience. Um, I hope you're taking care of yourself today, Tommy. You deserve it. You show up. Give yourself a hug from all of us, please, today at least. And rest in peace, Buddha. She'll pour one out for you. And I believe she will. I really do. I believe that she will. And thank you. It's a beautiful comment. It really is. <clears throat> so yeah, as I, you know, as I was saying, it one of the uh, one of the great relationships that I can remember in my life, and I probably got more out of it than most relationships I've had in my life. I can't do it ever again. I can't, right? Uh, it's probably the most unhealthy thing that you could possibly do. You're me. Honestly, no regrets, but I'm bringing in professional help to set boundaries because I don't have the capacity. But the reason I'm doing this is because I show up. And I want to be showing up a year from now, and I want to be showing up two years from now, or three years from now, or four years from now. And if I don't, uh, and if I don't take care of this, um, then there's not going to be any showing up ever. I'm going to be gone. And uh, and I'll tell you something else. I have found, sadly, that um, what I do here, what I do here, is really hard on people that I invite in. It, it destroys health. It destroys a lot. And there have been um, a bunch of people that have sat in this chair other than me. And it has, uh, it has caused massive um, upheaval in the lives of all of those people. And uh, Mark and I love each other, you know, best of friends. And I think Heather and I will probably be there again someday too. But um, no regrets. Hell of a tattoo. They're going to get it on my neck. Uh, you know, you're really not. The neck tattoo, I think, is the uh, is the one that really screams more than any, I just got out of prison. Unless by some chance. Yeah. Sorry, people. I just um, I just literally had a flashback of sorts. I was just thinking about something that I kind of dig when that happens. Wow. Thank you, Full of Hope. Hey, never forget for a Buddha, there is a Lydia. It's a great comment. It really is. It's a really good comment. Well, what a very kind thing to say, Miss Butler. Tell me I'm not an addict or an ex, but I've been watching you for some time now. I watch you because you're it's a rare event to find somebody so true, raw, altruistic. That is you. Sorry for your loss. Thank you so much. Such a kind thing to say. Charlotte Everett, you look fantastic and green. Oh, boy. Well, that was a great comment. 
I wish it had come at 56 minutes after the hour because I'm not sure that I can keep going. But boy, was that a good comment. Good timing, you little rat. Uh, thank you, ZW. Well, May, um, if you quit being altruistic because you needed to take care of yourself and you did the right thing, you did. Do you know how many altruistic people kill themselves by being altruistic? Do you know how many people, honestly, who care so much then that care takes them off the planet, right? It causes ulcers and, uh, and all kinds of other really bad things. My thoughts and prayers are with you right now, my friend. My thoughts and prayers are with you right now. God bless. Be safe, please. To you and yours, man, be safe. Uh, Squirrel has been doing this, honestly, since the phone call. She doesn't get too far away from me, to be really honest with you. I think she's, uh, she's definitely aware that I'm having a bad time. And you know what, people? As... Uh, Remember the old Dennis Miller uh, Saturday Night Live stuff? That's the news. And I am out of here. This thing in my lap is a cat who should be in a basket. But, oh, look at that. She's going to get up there? What a girl. See you guys on the other side. God bless. <laughs>